Okay, so today I will be talking about the, the Iran hostage crisis of 1980. Obviously, it's me. Hi, it's Emmett. I'm here. And you get to choose if you want to watch the video, which you probably are if you're seeing me, or you just read it because honestly, it's pretty much all the same material. What was the Iran hostage crisis? The Iran hostage crisis was a, was a major international crisis caused by the seizure of the U.S. Em embassy in Tehran and its employees by revolutionary I Iranian students, who then held the embassy employees as hostages in direct violation of international law. This is very important to understand that Iran was just in a revolution and right in early years of the revolution, they decided to make such a bold statement to the world and try to completely change the way that Iran was placed in like international like society and like how what countries were able to do what. And an embassy is kind of like a headquarters for U.S. government representatives serving in a foreign country. So like it's just basically like a it's kind of like a safe house in another country for when you go and the revolutionary government of Iran under the Ayatollah Khomeini supported the hostage undertaking so the new revolutionary leader pretty much supported this completely and the crisis ended with the release of the hostages after a captivity of 444 days which was from the span of like November 4th 1979 to January 20th of 1981 And how did Ayatollah Rihola Khomeini gain power in Iran in the first place? Well, Shia cleric Ayatollah Rihola Khomeini. Why, why are all these fancy names in history? Okay, he was the leader of the Iranian Revolution, and he first came to poli political prominence in some somewhere around 1963, which is when he opposed. The Shah, which when he posed Shah, the uh, current dictator of Iran in 1963, and his programs of reform known as the White Revolution, which and this aimed to break the, up like land holdings owned by some Shia clergy, some women could v then vote, it made religious minorities able to hold office, and it was overall trying to like grant legal like equality and marital status issues like if a woman had an issue with a man in a marriage he was there to help and Khomeini declared that the Shah had like embarked on a destruction of Islam in, I in Iran he was saying that like Shah was leading Iran to its downfall and this couldn't happen and he publicly denounced Shah as a wretched miserable man and following these state these bold statements he got arrested on june 5th 1963 and the three days after he got arrested there were major riots throughout the entirety of iran which were all community supporters at the time and they were claiming 15,000 people were killed by police fire alone just trying to calm down the riots and community was detained and kept under house arrest for eight months after all these instances resolved themselves. And that leads us to what events led to the Iranian revolution, because we need to know the background of the Iran hostage crisis to be able to properly understand what's happening in the situation. And the very first signs of opposition in 1977 came from Iranian constitutionalist liberals. They wanted the Shah to adhere to the Iranian constitution of 1906 rather than religious rule. Some issues between 1970 and 1977 that led to this are, there are many things, so I just chose a few of the more like most impactful ones for this presentation. In October 1971, the 25th, the 2500th anniversary of the founding of, Pers of the Persian Empire was held at the site of Persopolis. Cost was, offic was officially $40 million, but estimated more to be in the range of $100 to $120 million. Meanwhile, drought ravaged the provinces of Bluchistan, Sistan, and even Fars, where 
the celebrations were held. As the foreigners revealed, reveled on drink forbidden by Islam, Iranians were not only excluded from the festivals, some were starving. This really made people mad because it showed how like their priorities aren't in the people, but in celebrations and parties and stuff like that for, for the higher class. And by late 1974, the oil boom had begun to produce not the great civilization produced, promised by the Shah, but an alarming increase in inflation and waste and an accelerating gap between the rich and the poor and the city and the country. The, the oil boom, Shah was saying when he was dictator, would be the promising gateway to be able to make civilization great again. And all it really did was create a huge, a, a bigger gap between the rich and the poor and really like cemented this position in Iran. And in 1977, a new American president, Jimmy Carter, was inaugurated and the office sent Shaw to, a reminder to focus on political rights and freedom. This made many people in Iran blame America for the trend of liberalization by the Shah and formed organizations that denounced his regime. Basically, the new, when it came closer to like 1977, that area where the revolution really begun, uh, the Shah was like too buddy buddy with America at the time, and a lot of the Iranian people disagreed with this and openly spoke out against it, which was like the main fuel for the revolution. And the removal of US from Iran <sighs> Shah had been close to a succession of US administrations. And this had produced deep suspicion and hostility among Iran's revolutionary leaders. From both the left and right of the political spectrum, beginning in the fall of 1978, the U.S. Embassy in Tehran had been the scene of frequent demonstrations of Iranians who opposed the American presence in their country. In February, on February 14, 1979, about a month after the Shah had fled Iran, the embassy was attacked and occupied. This happened due to Iran being in the middle of an enormous revolution and the immediate change of US posture and the involvement in Iran. Basically, this was Iran, this was the revolution's new statement to America and every other country in the world that Iran was going to be their own rulers. They didn't want to associate with us and they definitely wanted to show that they want, they're going to live their own life no matter what or at least that was the image they were trying to get across at the time. They weren't able to like effectively do this in the end. It turned out it turned out horrible for all countries. Let's just say it that way. And the justification to seize the embassy on October 22nd, 1979, Shaw was super sick and was admitted for medical treatment in the United States. He had cancer. Shaw had cancer, and he came to and he was admitted in the United States with the hopes of being able to cure the cancer. On November fourth, nineteen seventy nine, three to five hundred Iranian students seized the embassy in Tehran. The Shah's entry into the U.S. was their justification. The idea that the Shah was in America really gave them the idea that they were they were like allowed to take over the embassy and hold 66 people hostage which is what it started out with and of course in mid-november they released 13 of the hostages this was at this was per jimmy carter's request jimmy carter requested that all the women and african-american were released and this did happen within those 13 people and, and later, and sooner in July, they released Richard Queen, who was suffering from multiple sclerosis. And this left 52 hostages that would be like under control for 444 days. And quick changes in Iran included many of the following. On November 5th, 1979, the Iranian government canceled military treaties with the U.S. and Soviet Union. This allowed for military intervention. 
the idea that like they don't they don't they aren't scared of you attacking their country they are going to defend it and they're prepared to do anything for iran and i mean i guess that's what a revolution is based off of yay and on november 15th 1979 President Carter ordered Iranian assets and U.S. banks frozen to create more animosity between the U.S. and the and the revolutionary Iran in an economic view. Freezing their assets is when is when the United States bolstered its position by refusing the purchase of Iranian oil, by freezing billions of dollars of Iranian assets in the United States and by engaging throughout the crisis in a vigorous campaign of international diplomacy against the Iranians. We really just tried to out-eco them, like out-economic them. It just... There's just so many things wrong with history. Don't worry about it. And on December 4th, 1979, the the United Nations Security Council passes a resolution calling for Iran to release the hostages. Didn't work. They still called for it, though. And on April 7, 1980, President Carter cut diplomatic ties with Iran, announcing further sanctions and ordered all Iranian diplomats to leave the United States. I guess if America's got to get out of Iran, Iran's got to get out of Iraq. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, and in government affairs... By early April 1980, the U.S. administrations were seeking a military option. A group of special operative soldiers advanced via helicopter to a second rally point and attempt to recover the hostages. This failed in so many ways, like two helicopters stalled out before the first checkpoint, another one stalled out before the second, something they crashed at some point on the way back after failing. And there were eight bodies left of, there were eight bodies of the operatives left with this failed mission and the bodies were actually paraded around iran like a trophy and this took jimmy carter like a lot of time and money and effort to get those bodies out of iran but it really like set a tone that like this isn't working this isn't happening well this there's no negotiating here and something's gotta change and on september 22nd iraq invaded iran This pressured Iran into economic collapse and f- and force a treaty and force a treaty. And January 19, 1981, the Algiers Accord were signed, constituting the final US-Iran deal to end the hostage crisis. And the Iranian demands were centered largely around like releasing frozen Iranian assets and lifting the trade embargo which America which the United States the United States made the trade embargo in May of 1980, which stopped, which basically just said, other countries, you're friends with me, you don't trade with Iran. That That's what they did. And it worked, I guess. It worked in the end. And the aftermath, the Iran hostage crisis was a severe blow to US morale and prestige, coming as it did in the aftermath of the Vietnam War. In addition to placing a roadblock in the path of U.S. Iranian relations, and you know, this crisis lasted 444 days. Anyone ready for quarantine to last twice as long? An odd fact: it took them about 35 years. And on December 18th, 2015, Congress passes a budget bill that in- that includes a provision authorizing each of the 53 hostages to receive $10,000 for each day they were held captive. In addition, spouses and children will separately receive a one-time payment of $600,000. I want to be them, please. And then and then I have a beautiful we're excited page that says a lot of sites and shows I did research. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching.